Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. You're listening to the Colored In Podcast. I am your host, Nai, and that's N-A-I because I'm nice and innovative. For those who may be new to the series or not familiar with the pillars, let me be the first to welcome you to the crew. Crew is an acronym for the four themes this podcast is going to focus on. It stands for career and culture, relationships, education, and wellness. I decided to focus my podcast on these themes because I think there are some key concepts that can give us a structured way at looking at the world. I go into it a lot about what these topics mean for me in the first episode. So if you have not listened to it, be sure to check out episode one and all the other episodes that have already been posted. And of course, don't forget to connect with us on Instagram, like our posts, share our episodes, and DM us your feedback at underscore colored underscore in. So today, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. As you all know, we're back at our letter C for the pillars, but I figured in addition to our culture pillar, we are also going to be tackling our relationship pillar as well. So to put it all together, we're actually going to be hitting letters C and letters R, and that's going to be culture and relationships. So I decided to mend the two together because I was inspired by my guest's story, and I will be introducing my guest in a couple of minutes, but she is going to be talking to us today about the perception of American culture from the eyes of an immigrant. Now, full disclosure, she is actually a citizen, but she wasn't born in America and actually migrated here in the 1980s, and she is going to be taking us through that journey of migration to this country, and she's going to help us understand how that shaped her understanding of relationships, but also the changing dynamics of culture. So without further ado, say hi to the crew. Welcome, Miss Gold. Hi, crew. Uh, also, full disclosure, her name is actually not Miss Gold. Her last name is not Miss Gold, but she was uncomfortable with providing her full name. So we decided on creating a color alias. Yes. Hi, crew. Okay. Um, so first off, Miss Gold, I want to thank you for being here today. I'm really excited that you're going to be sharing your story with us. Um, but first off, I wanted to just ask you, like, how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling about America and the state of America today from what you knew from so long ago? Oh, good morning, and I'm happy to be here. America is, is a great country. The land is a, when you're looking at it, from my perspective, is a great country. It's a land of opportunity. But the way things change now, to tell you the truth, I don't know what is it anymore. So you don't think it's that land of opportunity anymore? It's still, but you really have to fight and focus to be somewhere right now in America. Okay. And so with all the recent protesting and the, the, the different police abuse and all those stories, was that something that was normal back then when you first migrated here? Like, it was that, is this something new to you in the way things are progressing? Yes. I didn't know, I, I cannot tell it wasn't there before when I came to this country, mm -hmm. but I didn't know. It is not like out the way it is now. Maybe it was on the cover, you don't know. Things happen. But to tell you the truth, I never heard about all those or see on TV what's going right now. To me now, to me, America is falling down. The way I see it. Because when I first came here, it was beautiful. You can talk to anybody, you can go out anytime you want to, you find job easily. And uh, now everything is changed. I, is, I'm taking myself, sometimes is it really America the way I heard before and the way when I came here, the way it was, is it what's changed? Why is it so hard now? I think that's a very interesting topic or a very interesting concept you brought up because the the idea that America was actually better when things were much more simpler and yeah. or as you would say undercover. So like when no one knew what was happening or people were able to kind of keep things from us, it almost felt like it was better. But now that it's out in the open, it feels a lot much harder 
and things are a lot more difficult to process. Yes, yes. Let's take it all the way to the back. As people can tell by your accent, which is a very beautiful accent, you are originally from the Caribbean island and you migrated here in the 1980s. What did you know about America when you were back home and kind of what brought you over here? So what was America when you never stepped foot on the country for you? Back home, when I was a little growing up, people travel. People come to America. When they come back to visit, the way you see those people, they're so beautiful. Their skin color changed. They look completely different. So that's give you, that always give me an idea, say, one day I have to be in that country. And the way they talk, they, they, like, they show you they're really a land of opportunity. So if you go there, life life will change for you and your family so i always put america in my dream mm. to be in that country one day yeah so you're saying that when individuals or family members or whoever went to america and they came back they came back looking different and beautiful and it was just like wow like if I go over there, the same thing's going to happen to me. Yes. Okay. That's very interesting. So, obviously, you're here. You're in America. Um, do you feel like that was the right perception? Like, if the America that you thought of, was that the America that you got when you came here? No. No. Okay. No. The America I thought of, the way they say it, is like a... Like I said before, it's, yes, it is a land of opportunity. But to be successful or to get anywhere, not only you need the support and you need to focus mm -hmm. because there is a lot of distraction, distraction. You have to really focus. You want to get somewhere. Otherwise, you will be in drugs, in the street, you will be, like I say, lost forever. If you don't have, re, re, if you really don't think about, like I said before, if you don't focus, really focus and have God as your guidance. So you're saying America, yeah, land of opportunity. You can have the chance to do that. Even, even, And you said even before, like it was easier to get jobs. It was easier to kind of go through life on a day-to-day -day basis because, you know, you weren't bombarded with so much destruction and so much um, abuse in the media and, and all that stuff. But at the same time, if you didn't have support, if you didn't have someone there to kind of hold your hand, at least at the beginning for a little bit, it would all fall through the cracks. Like you would, you would be gone and America would have messed you up. Yes. Uh, when I say someone is the pen, okay. because someone can lead you to bad thing. So you're saying someone could have sabotaged you. Yes. And and also hurt your your chances of achieving the American dream. Do you know the yes. American dream? <laughs> or do you know about the American dream with the white picket fence, two kids, a dog, beautiful house, loving husband? Okay, so, so I'll tell you a bit more about what that's like. So the American dream, as we know it, is a concept that was sold back in the days to immigrants, which is kind of similar to what I'm hearing in your story. But it's the concept that if you work really, 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 really hard, no matter what, you work super hard, you will be able to own a big house, have a have a big family or whatever size family you want. Usually it's two kids and a loving husband, beautiful dog surrounded by a white picket fence. And that if you don't have that, it's because you didn't work hard enough. How, what does that sound like to you? So, that sounds good. <laughs> but I can say now I have the American dreams because I have a nice house, really comfortable with a lot of warmth and that's my palace. Right. Okay, that's my palace. And I have three beautiful kids. 
And okay, I don't have a dog. Right. <laughs> have three beautiful kids and a nice husband. Right. So I can say I achieved my dream, but I'm still focusing on go higher. Right. Which is amazing, obviously. <laughs> we always want our listeners to know that you are never stuck in your station of life. You always have the opportunity to keep moving and keep progressing forward. Yes. So you said you've achieved the American dream, which is great. Do you think the American dream is achievable for everyone then? Yes. But it depends on how you focus. It depends on how you take life. It depends on the environment where you are. Okay? Because you can try, try, and try so hard to be somewhere, to be someone, to be somebody. On one side, the racism and people don't like you. Sometimes people don't like you, you don't know why. Yeah. They just don't like you. That's true. And they try to pull you back. Even your own family yeah. can pull you back from going somewhere. I mean, it is for everyone, but I don't think anyone, everyone can achieve the American dream. Right. So you think the possibility of going after your dreams and going after your goals is achievable? But it's depending on who you have around you, where you're focusing your intentions, and a lot of other factors. So you're saying it's not hard work alone. There are a lot of other things that go into being able to attribute your American dream. Yes. Right. And you mentioned God a lot, which I am so with you. I am also very spiritually devout, so I am on that wavelength. But for the people who are not... Right for the people who are atheist in the world, what what would they have? I can't say what they have. Okay, so I love God. Okay, <laughs> I believe I love God. He's my everything. Okay, great. So for the people who are not spiritually devout, I don't want to alienate anyone in the audience. Obviously, you are alive, you are well, you are doing okay. So whatever that you're doing, keep doing it, right? We're not trying to convert anyone into Catholicism or Protestantism. Our guest here today is spiritually devout, so that is going to be a cornerstone. But, you know, again, do what, do what, you're keep, do what you keep doing. I do think that there is a way about the universe that's not religiously linked um, that allows things to work out for people who do good onto others. So I would just encourage that you go about your life, but also go go forth with a sense of kindness and respect, and the universe will, will, will reward you in that fashion. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about the relationships that you've built and the relationships that you've maybe lost within this whole migration and this whole journey. So tell me a little bit about how your relationship changed with family or friends back home um, when you moved over to America, or did it change at all? Um, change the change I can say is because we don't see each other every day anymore. We used to write each other by mail, and uh, we do, we used we keep contact. But you know, some people like every family. But uh, let's say, like my family, some people don't like you to get somewhere, friend or family. The even you write them, they don't answer back, or when they answer back, they hurt you with those some words. You know, you think about okay, I'll pass on that one. But if you have God in your life, on your side, you you can't do that. You should love everybody. Love your friend, your family, everyone, even they hurt you. Okay, so you kill, kill. But me, I still have contact with my family. Okay, still have contact. Yes. Yeah. Knowing what America is now versus what you thought it was, do you tell your family back home how America really is, or do do they think that it's the land of opportunity still? <laughs> you know, yes. They do. Because they still want to be here. They still want to come. Okay. Because some people, even you tell them, even you explain to them, they think you're lying. Okay. Okay? Yeah. They think you don't want them to be a part of the good things. So, yes, they still want to be here. And believe me, if I could, I will bring all of them here to see 
with their own eyes to survive to live what i'm living right now mm. yes i will bring everybody here so you can show them it's still a struggle that's right <laughs> yes that's right and it's amazing to know that you and your family still keep in contact and you have good relationships with them uh i wanted to ask you how did you make friends here when you came over here, I, I think it was a, alone, right? You didn't come with family. You no. came on your own. Mm -hmm. How did you make friends? Like, what did you do? <laughs> I talking to people. When I go, when I find a work, a job, try to contact people, try to talk to people, and be nice to people. Mm -hmm. And in school, I went to school and try to make friends because. Like I say, even you achieve something, you cannot achieve it alone in America. Sometimes you take someone and somebody talk to you. The, the way you say it is not the right way. The person told you something and that's this. You can follow the good thing. So that's the way I make friends. Okay. And I thank God I make some good friends who can support me anywhere, anytime, any day sun or rain or we weather whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> or storm they're always there for me they're always with me i make good friends thank god okay <laughs> <laughs> that's great so you make good friends you've achieved the american dream that's all amazing but also america has a lot of work to do and considering what what it was from before it seems like it's progressively got progressively have gotten a lot harder and a lot more difficult to navigate one thing that i want to ask before and this is probably going to be my last question because i don't want to take up too much of your time but if there was one thing that you would change about the state of the world today what would it be the one thing i want to change it's the law i think the law is missing somewhere okay it's lost somewhere but that's what i think i will change that and i will put i will talk to the to the force you are the police you have the power to do whatever you want to think about yourself about your family if some if you do that to that person and somebody do it to your family how will you feel right take first think about yourself so you would change empathy training so give them training on being compassionate yes and, and give them empathy yeah. that doesn't mean if somebody come to kill you you don't defend yourself right there's no. always like cases to it yes but, but being a bit more sensitive to situations one after the other mm. something's wrong something's Something missing is, yeah okay Something. and you would change pray so you would you would ask everyone to pray <laughs> to pray yes i'm faith in to god keep pray, to keep faith. On praying. <laughs> put god on your budget on okay. your budget in your budget okay <laughs> um great so thank you so much for coming to talk to us today i think your story of course is amazing you are a successful woman you have uh, an amazing life and you obviously you're going to continue on that amazing life so i really appreciate you taking the time out to speak to me and my listeners today and kind of help us understand how America has progressed throughout the years. Uh, there are a lot of important tidbits that I think we can all use and walk away with. So I am really, again, want to say thank you uh, for coming and talking to us. You are welcome and thank you very much for having me. Of course. I appreciate it. All right, so that's it for today, crew. That was a load, a bit of a loaded topic, and I hope that you guys were able to enjoy that. But I'm very excited um, to continue on these interviews with you guys, and I have a lot more in store, so make sure you stay tuned. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to share this episode with your friends so that they can join the crew and find us on Spotify, Google Podcast, Breaker, and Anchor. Connect with us on Instagram at underscore colored underscore in and be sure to leave us your thoughts. I'm excited to hear from you guys and can't wait to speak with you soon. Bye. That should be